from the News Channel 5 Network, this is On The Line. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Open Line. I'm Ben Hall. Very good show tonight. We're talking about scams and frauds here in Davidson County. What are some of the most common scams that people see? And so we want to hear from you if you have had someone you know who's been through this or maybe you've been approached in some way. We want to hear from you, but we are going to be talking with people who certainly know all about this. Lieutenant Grant Carroll with the Metro Police Department Fraud Unit is with us and Detective Michael Park also with the Metro Police Department Fraud Unit. Thank you both for being with us. Thanks for having us. And so let's start out broadly. Most common scams that are taking place in Davidson County right now, what, what, what are we talking about? Uh, there's a couple that we would touch on. The first one is obviously we have a home improvement scams that are always target elderly people. Um, we always need to get out to the media and, and let everybody know, remind people what to look for, what may be suspicious, what's not suspicious. Um, by home improvement scams, we're talking about people who want to do repair work on roofs or driveways, stuff like that. Um, as we always tell people, always as in any kind of business, you're not sure the person you need to get references and verify that that person is a legitimate contractor and that they've done work and the work was good. That would be the first step that you would have to do, especially if it's someone coming up to your door to knock on the door and say, hey, I can give you a good deal on a roof or I can reseal this because I got extra supplies and I just need to get off my truck. That obviously is going to raise a red flag. If you're not, if you haven't reached out to them and they're just coming to your door, you need to do your research. Yeah, that's a real red flag and maybe don't, maybe don't just hire them off right off the bat right do your research and the fact that there is this police fraud unit and you look at it embezzlement forgery theft scams credit cards cyber crimes y'all do a lot there's there's a lot of activity in davidson county when it comes to this kind of stuff is that right yes there is and one of the uh, most prevalent types of scams we see are those either conducted over the phone or via email or the internet uh, one of the reasons why these are so popular with criminals is it's very hard to identify the criminal and also very hard to prosecute. Uh, when you receive an email from someone you have not solicited information from indicating that you owe them money, that's typically a red flag. And uh, one of the most common scams we receive is uh, where someone indicates they are with NES, that's very common. Uh, they may indicate they're with the IRS, a federal law enforcement agency, and they threaten the citizen that they will lose their power and it'll be turned off overnight unless they make a payment with a green dot card. Uh, if it's the IRS, they say they'll be arrested for not paying their taxes or they'll say they're with the FBI Secret Service and they'll be arrested for not paying taxes or pay some fine. Uh, they'll instruct the citizen to go purchase green dot cards and then send the criminal the code on the back. There's a code on the back and once the criminal has that code, they can access that money from anywhere in the world. So uh, it, it's common that this happens from overseas. Uh, we've had um, these scams where uh, we believe that they have originate, originated in Nigeria. And people ask us, well, can't you do anything? Well, we can only prosecute in Davidson County. Um, can't prosecute outside the United States. And we've been asked, well, can't the Nigerian government do anything? Well, they're currently going through a civil war. so They've got a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, so um, we need citizens to make sure that they're very cautious about uh, how they transfer funds. A legitimate company is not going to ask you to pay a bill with a green dot card. If, if a person alleges they're with a the company and they say they want you to pay with a green dot card, you can always go to the green dot card website and verify that that's accurate. And how are they picking their targets? Is it random or is there some thought to who they're selecting to say this to? Certain parts of town, uh, certain credit histories, that kind of thing? Or is it from Nigeria, they're just sending out a bunch of emails and one or two of them stick and they're happy? 
Based on the training uh, we've received, uh, the emails are often uh, received off of people's computers based on uh, when someone goes to a website that's malicious and the website will pull all their emails uh, from their computer. Then uh, that goes to the criminal's uh, computer and what they do is they use the websites like say you go to a malicious website. They will obtain all your email contacts and then they'll send it out to uh, people that are on your, uh, that you have email addresses for. And when you say malicious website, what does that mean? A malicious website is a website that will insert a virus, a worm, uh, or some cookie or tracking software on your computer in order to extract information from your computer. And would you know at that moment that that's happened? Uh, often you won't. Often you won't. Wow. Okay. And right. then, unfortunately, on top of that, is once they have your information and they share it with other groups, that information is sold all around the world. So you get on a database on your email, your phone number, it's going to continue to happen. They're going to, other groups are going to reach out to you. And so how often are people coming into your office saying, I was scammed in this way or that way? I mean, is it every day you're getting? It's every day. <laughs> it's multiple times every day. It's constant. And is Nashville different than other communities? Are we targeted more, about the same? You know, where do we rate as far as the activity? For uh, these types of crimes, uh, nationally, they are not measured. Uh, from talking with uh, officers from other jurisdictions, we seem to be on par with them for uh, the amount that artists, our citizens are victimized. Uh, being a major metropolitan area, obviously we'd have the same uh, or we'd have a larger number than say Chattanooga or Clarksville, but for relative size, my impression is it's about the same. And of course, at the top of the show, I encourage people to call in. Sometimes people are reluctant to share their story, but you can do it anonymously. Share your story, we can talk about it. Perhaps others can learn from it. We have Laura on the line. Laura, hello. Hi, how y'all doing tonight? Great, what's on your mind? Uh, yes, sir. I wanted to say that at first I was one of a victim of identity theft where I had someone actually come to my house who actually stole my computer and took it somewhere else and then I got different people that go online to try to get money from these, uh, what's that, uh, that, uh, Martel, Will, whatever it is, and everything. So I had people calling me and trying to tell me that I owed them money, and which I know I didn't because I ain't the one who borrowed that. And it's kind of hard to prove that unless I had, you know, I had to call and get a, a police report number to uh, let them know what had happened. So I just want to know what I need to do and to keep that from happening again because I never had that type of situation until I actually. Uh, and then, you know, that's when uh, you're saying someone, came about. You're saying someone came in your house and stole your entire computer? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, what about her situation here? Well, Laura, is unfortunately very common. When people get a hold of your information, then they're going to go out and get credit, which would appear is what happened to Laura there, is they get credit or services in Laura's name because they have her personal information, which, which was pers probably on her computer. So they have her name, date of birth, social security number, which generally is all you need. A lot of times you get that quick credit online. You don't even have to be in person. You can do it on the phone or on the computer. What Laura has to do, and I'm sure if she's talked to her office, as we instructed her and other people, is if you feel like your information has been compromised, which obviously hers has, what we would suggest is call a credit bureau and put a fraud alert on your name and information. There's three credit bureaus. When you put your information on one of the credit bureaus, all three cover that. So, and what if, if people say, well, what good does that do? Well, what that prevents is people easily getting credit in your name because when the credit service checks your credit history, they're going to see an alert. So there's more, there's extra precautions that they have to do to make sure that that's the actual person getting the credit. And then, obviously, it's going to take a while because you'll find it as you go along. You're going to, when she pulls a credit report, she's going to find other stuff that she didn't realize. It can be very tedious and long to get it a couple of years sometimes just because it's extensive. Once they have your information, it's, it's a lot they can do with it. We've certainly done stories about this, and this is one of the worst kind. I mean, scams, I sometimes think of the guy showing up saying he can fix your roof, and, you know, and, and that's kind of maybe a one-time thing. This is identity theft, right. and this is, is years, like you said. Mm -hmm. And 
So how common is that? How common is identity theft? It's extremely common. Um, to I, oh, I mean, I've, I've been in the fraud unit for almost over a little over nine years, and it's exponentially went up higher and higher people. Unfortunately, it's become very popular, and it's so easy to do that that information gets shared around, and people learn how easy it is to go and get information on, you know, get services under someone else's information, and they just share it with everybody else. So it just spreads. And so it's a common thing. That we're, I mean, it's getting more and more common. More and more people learn how to do it. That's too bad. Okay, we'll talk more about that and what, what do we need to do once that happens and, and how can we prevent it and those kind of things. Laura, thank you for your call. If you want to call, there's the number, 737-PLUS, 737-7587. We will take a break and be back right after this.